Hey everyone, welcome to the 17th episode of our Java game development tutorial series. Um, sorry that I haven't been able to make any episodes in the last few days, but since uh, you know, since my YouTube view count is you know rather low, um, I make about 20 cents um, total so far off of the videos with uh, YouTube's monetization. So I I can't really justify spending too much of my time on this whenever there's other um, more lucrative uh, prospects, I suppose uh, you'd say. Um, so I'm I can spend some of my time working on this, but if I I, I haven't had any free time because I've been real busy. Uh, so I hope to be able to work more on this. Maybe as my uh, channel grows, um, I'll be able to spend more time on this. Uh, Last time, if you remember right, we um, created a camera system for our game to create a virtual camera. Today, we're going to create a uh, backdrop system uh, that's going to draw a backdrop behind everything in our world, and it's going to have a parallax effect, and for those of you who don't know what parallax is, it's in two-dimensional games when the background moves more slowly than the foreground to give it sort of a three-dimensional effect, uh, give it a sense of depth. That's what we're doing here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is in our world class, we're going to create a new private static buffered image we're going to call it backdrop and it equals null to begin with okay then I'm going to create a uh, in our render class oh, sorry render method not the render class we're still in the world class if backdrop does not equal null then we can go ahead and draw it else we're going to go ahead and load it. Now, we're not going to load it here whenever in our finished game because this would be a bad place to load it because then we'd be hard coding it into the world class and we couldn't use a different image for your different worlds. So that's not how we're going to do it. But for now, it is for temporary purposes. Backdrop equals renderer dot load image. Mine is located in slash resources slash images slash backdrop dot png and surround it with try catch to get rid of that error. Um, as you can see, my backdrop.png is over here. It's a 400 by 250 um, image, um, green hills and a blue sky, you know, basic programmer art. Um, the reason I made it 400 by 250 is because if you remember right in our game, uh, our render class, that's our ideal game height, uh, or game width and height. 400 by 250. It's not the final game width and game height because that's dependent on the user's screen. But this, the way we render it, it'll automatically scale up to fit inside the game width and game height that we are using, which will never be more than game width times two and game height times two. Uh, but anyway, back in the world class, let's go ahead and draw it. G. Dot draw image. Backdrop. X and Y. The width and height will be renderer dot game width, not the uppercase one with the uh, underscore, but the other one. And same thing, renderer dot game height. And null for the image observer. Now let's go ahead and create those x and y values. Int x equals zero, int y equals zero. Now if we were to run the game, we move around and Everything and the background stays still. As you can see, I made that platform uh, red to make it contrast against the background a bit better. If you want to do that, you just go into platform, our, our platform class, and change where it said color dot green to color dot red. Um, I made it do that so it'll stand out against the green hills. Um, anyway, it stays. The background stays completely still because we're always drawing, starting in the upper left hand corner, which is zero by zero. What we need to do is uh, create a variable up here, private static int backdrop x equals zero to start with. And what we want to say here is that int x equals backdrop x minus renderer.camx, okay? And renderer.camx needs to be cast to an int. Now if we run this, the background moves. Cool, isn't it? Now the thing is, if we go too far this way, obviously we've got this big black area. And if we just move this way, the background just stays back there. We kind of don't want that. Um, 
so what we're going to do to fix that is we need to loop the background. We need to move the background over to fit inside where the uh, so that the background is always visible. And we would do that as we say if backdrop x is less than if I'm doing this right, I'm going to use my cheat sheet. I wrote this code a month ago. Uh, no, sorry, like four months ago at least. Backdrop x is less than camera minus. Okay, if backdrop x is less than renderer dot cam x minus renderer dot game width. So if we've moved too far to the left, we want to, uh, or if we've moved too far to the right, so now the backdrop is way off on the left and is off screen, we want to move it over to the right by saying backdrop x plus equals renderer dot game width. And the same thing for if we move too far in the other direction. So this needs to change to greater than, and this becomes plus and this becomes minus. Now whenever we run the game, if we move to the right too far, the backdrop snaps back into place. Likewise, if we go in the other direction too far, backdrop snaps into place. All we need now is to draw one more backdrop to fill in that, uh, our background backdrop loops, in case you didn't notice. We just need to draw one more backdrop to fill in that empty space. Let me check my cheat sheet again. Mm. Okay, so back here we say if backdrop x is greater than okay, backdrop x is greater than renderer dot cam x, then the buffer will be in a specific position. The buffer x will be backdrop x minus the game width, minus the cam. So, um, uh, where's my, where did we create buffer? Oh, wait, we didn't. <laughs> okay, silly us. I'm going to copy this right here and put it down here. Actually, see this Y that we created? We're never actually going to use that Y. We can just put zero in here. This Y will change this uh, to buffer x and for right now it's zero but if backdrop x is greater than renderer.cam x buffer x equals backdrop x and I cheat sheet again backdrop x minus okay backdrop x minus renderer.game width okay there's a uh, thing in coding. They say that code written um, written by you six months ago may as well have been written by someone else. And that's definitely true because I have to keep looking back at my old code to remember how I did this because it made sense at the time and now it doesn't because I'm not thinking about it. Minus the int that is uh, renderer.camx. And likewise, if... This is uh, else, then backdrop x plus renderer.game with minus renderer.cam x. Yep, that's correct. Now we want to add another draw image call because we're going to draw two images. One is the backdrop and it's rendered at x, the other one will be rendered at buffer x. Now, whenever we run it, it should create a completely seamless looping background. And as we move this way, that's exactly what happens. No matter how far we move, the background will always be seamlessly looped, as long as your background is seamless also. Um, and one more thing I want to change before we uh, stop for the day is, in, back in your player class, get rid of where we change the camera's um, Y position. Uh, let's just say we'll set that for 100. It'll make sense at the time. Uh, or it makes sense later. Basically, we just want to set it for something that will not move whenever we jump up and down. We don't want to follow the player up and down. Um, we only want to follow them side to side, like this. See? Now, there's no parallax effect, you'll notice. The way we do that is really quite simple. Basically, every time we refer to, in our rendering code here, every time we refer to cam x, we want to refer instead to cam x divided by 2. 
so then it's only moving half as much relative to the camera. So cam x divided by 2, cam x divided by 2, cam x divided by 2. Uh, I'm going to put this in parentheses since it's being cast to an integer. Um, cam x divided by 2, cam x divided by 2, again parentheses, and here also parentheses, cam x divided by 2. Now whenever we run this, the background moves more slowly than the foreground. It's pretty cool. And if you want to change how much uh, parallax you get, you simply um, change the number that you divide it by here. So where we say divided by 2, if we said divided by 3, everywhere where we divided it by 2, we divide it by 3 instead, then we'll have more of a parallax effect. The background will look like it's further away. See? Now, it's not too noticeable and impressive right now because we've only got like one object in the foreground that's actually to actually compare it against. Um, but as we get more things uh, in the foreground, um, you'll notice it more and it'll uh, appear much cooler. Um, so thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing on this video. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, the more subscribers, the more views I get, the more ad revenue um, my channel generates, the more time I can spend working on programming videos like this. Um, so yeah, if you like the episode, uh, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe, anything like that. Um, and thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.